Welcome to another episode of the Being Better Every Day podcast. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Brittany, a brilliant mind and heart behind the Capture the Chaos Planner, one that I've ordered myself for 2025. As a wife, mom of three, family photographer, and someone running a planner business, Brittany has a full plate, like all of us, and she's found a way to balance it all, most days. Her journey from feeling limited by ADHD diagnosis to thriving as a master chaos wrangler has led her to create a planner that isn't about perfection, but about finding a rhythm that fits your life. We're diving into the realities of being a multi-passionate mom, which all of you who listen to my podcast know I am myself, and she has managed to build a life that embraces every beautiful, messy, fulfilling moment. Whether you're feeling overwhelmed by the demands of life or seeking ways to bring more calm and intentionality into your days, she has some great insights to share with us. So get ready to feel inspired and let's get into it. I am on a journey to get better in all areas of my life and I want to do it with you. Welcome to the Being Better Every Day podcast where we dig deep into all the things a millennial mom needs to know from how to juggle your passions with your full-time job to asking the hard questions about hormones and health and learning from one another along the way. I am Julie Wenslick and as a mom, business owner, and corporate girly, sometimes life can feel like a lot. So join me in the journey of being better every day, where we create habits and routines that support your life, create calm in the chaos, and put the you back in your every day. Grab those headphones, put on your shoes, and join me on a walk while we get started with today's episode. So welcome, Brittany, to the podcast. Again, I'm so excited to have you on. And again, fortuitous that the, what is it, the Jenna Kutcher uh, Facebook group was uh, was how we connected, I think. Yeah. Um, by the way, that's the best intro that I've ever heard for myself. Like, wow, you like really, really made me sound amazing. <laughs> well, you know, as everyone also knows from my SEO series, uh, ChatGPT is my friend. So I actually, what I did is a little sneak behind the curtain. I took your website, I copied the copy from your about page, and as well as your other website, you have two websites. Um, and uploaded it and said, like, write me an intro. This is what my podcast is about. And there it is. Yeah. So I'm not great at writing, but ChatGPT is. <laughs> well, I also had ChatGPT write me an intro. So like whenever I apply to be on people's podcast, they asked for a bio. And that, so I had ChatGPT write a bio for me. And then I kind of like made it sound a little bit less robotic and more like myself. And yeah, um, I love me some ChatGPT. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it saves us time. All about what we were just, what I intro about of, of trying to run a business and be a mom and and all the things it definitely takes a lot so kind of to start this i i barely know your story because we've recently connected so sarah share a little bit about like your background where what businesses you run and and where you are today so i started off as a family photographer and and a newborn photographer and then um i started having babies and so i was growing humans alongside a business Uh, and if you know if you have kids and you're running a business you know that that is um especially when you have no background and like there was no one holding my hand and teaching me to do either of those things so it was it was pure chaos trying to figure these two things out and it wasn't until probably eight years into running a photography business that I kind of started figuring out how to systemize and automate things and kind of make it a little bit more organized. And then um, my home life was kind of struggling as well. Like, you know, our, it was, I, I have ADHD. And so we are, it, we always kind of struggle with like messies and um, ADHD people love piles. And so we just always have piles around our house of like, this needs to happen. Something needs to happen in this pile. So I'll get to that pile eventually. And then I have a pile over here. And that's just kind of like how, you know, my, my house still is. It's, it's a lot better than it used to be, but it was very messy. And I never knew how to organize the home part of things with the business part of things and then being a mom like how do I spend time with them and also get the business done I was very overwhelmed to I I got to the point of tears um sobbing on the call with my with my coach I'm like I don't know how to be a mom with kids at home all day and then I have like two hours to get anything done I have to clean the house and then I have to write blog posts with SEO and (laughs) I still want to be in bed by 10 o'clock like how do I do everything and she kind of like opened up my eyes to routines and she was like start putting your kitchen to bed while the kids are still like right after dinner and I was like you want me to clean while the kids are awake like they can see me do this um and so it was kind of this like eye-opening thing and then I had the kids you know start doing their own kind of routines and I 
went from someone who hated routines and was like, I would never follow a routine. I, you can't put me in that box to being this person who thrives and loves routines. And I really understand the value of them. And you, you, I, I, it irks me to think about not following a routine now. So it's kind of funny. Gosh, it's so interesting to see kind of like for me processing that there's a huge ebb in my life right now of like, I feel like I had really good routines in 2023 and just felt like I had, like you said, like I got things cleaned and I did things. And then all of a sudden I dropped all of my routines and I have very much felt on the chaos side of things, especially when it comes to my house in the last year. And I am not somebody who has been diagnosed with ADHD, but I definitely uh, identify with the majority of the (laughs) traits. And the piles thing is something that drives my husband absolutely nuts. And he just like flips on me every couple of weeks. I'm like, will you just deal with this? And I'm like, but it needs to be, I just, it's just sitting there. <laughs> Leave it there. Something, something else has to happen before that pile yeah. can be addressed. And I can't address it until this has been addressed, but I have to address this first. And it's like this whole long line of like, if you give a mouse a cookie kind of thing to get yeah. there and it's, you know, we will eventually get there. <laughs> just... Well, and for me, I've never identified necessarily with the whole executive function thing of like not being able to start a task. Mm-hmm. For the most part, because I have lists and I obviously have a full-time job and I know I need to get things done. However, grocery shopping this weekend was that for me. I legit put it off and I wouldn't even make a list. I could not do it for the life of me. And so my husband eventually went on Monday. (laughs) That's whenever I was pregnant with my my third, my daughter, I have three kids. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, I have three kids and I was pregnant with my daughter. I could not like three pregnancies is really hard on your body. And the older you get, the harder it gets. Um, not that I'm that old. It was just, it felt really hard. And so I could not stand for more than 10 minutes at a time. Like the, the ligaments were just so it hurt really bad. And so I stopped cooking. I stopped cleaning. I stopped grocery shopping. And the beautiful thing is my husband started doing all those things and it's never changed. Like we both share that load now. And so I was like, this is the best thing that ever happened is that not that he didn't do stuff before, but then he picked up a lot more of the slack. Cause I just, it wasn't like, Hey, can you do this for me? It was like, I just wasn't doing it. And so yeah. he was like, well, I guess I'm going to be doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, I actually have a husband who enjoys grocery shopping too, but if we don't have a list, we tend to like, he doesn't do a great job of like actually planning what we're going to eat. Yeah. He'll just come home with a bunch of random stuff. <laughs> Oh, see, he, my husband likes to do a day by day kind of grocery list or day by day. So we were literally going to the grocery store every single day. He was going to the grocery store every day. And then he eventually got to the point where he's like, Brittany, you need to start taking over the grocery bills again, because I'm in the season of making money in my business. And so like when I'm not, then he kind of takes it over and kind of like ebb and flow because we don't share money. I mean, it's crazy, but we don't, um, we share a house that he pays for that I live in and clean. Um, anyways, we have our, we have our ways, but anyway, so he was doing daily. And I was like, I will not be going to the grocery store every single day. So if we're going to, if you want me to take it over, it's going to be a week worth of groceries. So we have to plan it. So he had to start, like, we have to start thinking ahead of, ahead of time and like, okay, what are we doing this day? What's going to be the best dinner kind of thing. So, um, so yeah. I think the thing that you missed in your intro is, uh, obviously your background in, in photography, uh, you do have three kids, but what, are you doing now? Oh. <laughs> um, so I've kind of started moving away from photography a little bit with this busyness of our life. We have kids that are playing hockey and gymnastics and they're just really busy. And so I really wanted to do something that um, was less client facing. And so now I've created a planner uh, based on my own experience and how I um plan my life. I created a planner for other creative business owners to get their life in order and kind of create this balance and rhythm in their life as well. I, I, how did I miss talking about that? Was, <laughs> I mean, I scroll, get tunnel right? vision. <laughs> so on that planner, like what, how many years have you had? Was this the first this year is, or is this the second this year? This is my second year. So last 2024 was my first year. 2025 is the second year. So it's been a lot of. And, and for those of you who don't know, planner world like that would mean she developed the first planner in 2023 2023. yeah yeah Mm -hmm. uh and I actually came up again I I my history is in in planning and I I I have started my planner business for the exact same reason and 
I am no longer really focusing on that. I still have a couple of custom planners. I still, for the most part, uh, do my own custom planner too. But when I saw your planner, I think the thing for me that resonated the most was the fact that you approached it very similar to how I had approached it of family or life and business. Mm -hmm. And so talk a little bit about like why your planners, how you feel they're different and, and how it's worked for you. So a lot of people told me it, it's, they refer to it as a workbook. And I think that's what's, what's really cool is because I, you know, I used to kind of, I used to coach photographers to like run a business and I, I used to coach them to run their business in 15 hours a week or less. And I wanted to create a program that taught people how to like plan around their life and their business. And so that's kind of what goes into the planner is it's not just here's a planner to figure out how to use it. It's a planner that shows you how to use it and how to organize your life. I say all the time, it's not about the planner. It's about like the rhythms and the routines and the way you use it. Um, and so I wanted to keep a lot of blank space in my planner. I wanted it to be very simple. So that way people could create the the way that they wanted to plan, you know what I mean? So I, I don't have a whole lot of habit trackers or, you know, color in it or, you know, write, write this here, write that here, you know, you kind of make it what you want it to be. Um, and so I think, I think that's, what's kind of unique about it is one, it's made with an ADHD brain in mind because I needed it to work for my brain, which means lots of lists, so many spaces for lists and writing things down um, and just kind of like teaching people exactly what I did to take my chaos and get it under control. I mean, the list thing is, is why I gravitated towards your planner, because ultimately what I found, because I have my business and my full-time job, I have every single day, I have my, my full-time job list, but then I also have a little tiny spot because I only get an hour or so a day for my business and your planner layout. A lot of I still believe in time blocking. And so you have a section on it too. I think it's important, but I digitally time block at this point, right? Mm -hmm. I either do it on my head or I do it on my Outlook calendar. So I don't need it in my planner. And so the fact that you're the one that I bought, which is the green cover, I don't know the name of it. Newport, the Newport, Newport. spiral bound, <laughs> right? Yeah. Is again, it has the daily list area and that's where I'm like, okay, this will work for me. The other thing I love about it is the content planning section, because mm -hmm. that is something that, I mean, again, as a business owner, it's not just about the service you're providing. It's about all the other stuff that comes with it, including content creation. And, and so having that section that's, I mean, I'm most excited about having that and having a space for that. Although yeah, I'm going to need to watch one of your reels because I don't understand the four columns in the content creation. So let me tell you a little secret. Um, I white out most of my content planning section. I'll show it to you. So I know, I know that this is a podcast and so people can't, can't necessarily see it, but so I'll do the best to say it, describe what's going on here. So the well, funny thing yeah. is I have, yeah, if you want to watch it, you can go to YouTube. So, oh, that's right. You have it on YouTube. That's why we're on the screen here. Um, <laughs> Duh. So the funny thing is I white out a lot of what's on my planner. Um, and that's, I mean, that's what I said, make it, make it for what you need it to be. Um, okay. So here is the content we're getting to the back of the planner. And that's the thing I don't like about the coil bound planners is that, um, when you flip to the back, it gets really hard to like flatten them out anyways. Okay. So here is the content planning section in the back and I have, there's four columns and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven row, rows in it. And they're just like blank squares. Um, and then I have at the top of here, it says like, I oh, it's remember what if, so that's how I, that's how I've been oh, doing yeah. it. And everyone does something a little bit differently. So I, I put November four here. So that's the Monday of this week. And this is oops, all November four stuff, November 11th, November 18th, November 25th. And then across the page I wrote podcast. So here's my podcast stuff. Email is the second, second block of stuff. Facebook is the next block yeah. of stuff. And then this is all social down here because I try to post about four times a week. I don't always, but I kind of, You're I give myself a lot of grace. Putting just the general, like, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Okay. So it's just kind of like the topic. And so this is really my brainstorming page. Like I don't, I go through and I just write like, 
right here for social media, I wrote something that was kind of like would jog my memory whenever it came time to bake it. So debunk a time blocking myth and it's going to be a carousel. And then I wrote my favorite self-care tool. So these are just things to help me remember what that t- piece of topic is going to be about. And then content plan up here for like my podcast. It's like time blocking. I'm going to do a time blocking series. So that's going to be part of it. And yeah, so but that's how I've been using it. And if that, that's the cool thing, because we have a community and everyone does something a little bit differently. And not everyone is going to have a podcast to have content with. And not everyone's going to post four times on social media. And, you know, so I wanted it to be like very simple. But also there's a lot of people who don't know how to plan their content and they don't know, you know, there's a lot of like pillars and stuff that go into it, especially whenever you're kind of new and trying to figure out like your, your footing with like what to share. I think the pillar portion can be really beneficial. I don't really use pillars so much anymore like I used to because I know I know my audience and I know what kind of content they want to see. And so it's really easy for me to spit out. But at first, I would have pillars. So I could, you know, and then I also have a section in the, the, in the content planning section that gives you pillar ideas. Let me see if I can find that. Oh, yeah. So one could be like educate and it says. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. I did see that. Yeah. Yep. And then solve our problems, then, share a tool, stuff like that. Yeah. The blog checklist is going to be super helpful. But for me, and the way that I do, I, I actually talked about this. I think it'll air the episode before this episode. Uh, my process of, I record a podcast, but that podcast is then also on YouTube, but that also becomes a blog. And that also, like, it's all interconnected, right? And so mm-hmm. having a space to do that outside of, of digital, because for me, I can't digitally plan. Now, when I need to brain dump, if I have too much on my mind, I will do it. But if I digitally plan, I it's like I forget it exists, which again yeah. is the whole like, I feel yeah. like it's a PhD thing. But so I have to have it like in front of me because I'm somebody who, if it's not written down, if it's not on the list, it does not exist in my head. And it drives people nuts because I'll forget things two seconds later. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is, you know, <laughs> list of my best friends. So that's <laughs> exactly. My husband would be like, "Hey, on the way home from the gym, can you pick up some milk?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I absolutely can do that. We need, we definitely need milk." And then I come home and he's like, "Where's, Where's milk? the milk?" And I'm like, "Oh, I didn't write it down, so I don't remember." <laughs> like, yeah. or set an alarm, or, or you know, it's just like it's, just, it's not that it's not important. It's just that I that's the executive, you know, part of the executive dysfunction is that I can't remember. I just can't. I, 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 podcast right away because I feel like we connected like so quickly. <laughs> we did. <laughs> We and it's funny we had some like connections and in, in like other connections as well. But yeah. we had no idea yeah. that we both both yeah. made planners and you know it was really cool. Like whenever you kind of social media can be really great sometimes. I mean it can be it can be also be like a a, a brain suck, but also it can be really beautiful. <laughs> uh, what does it look like for you? You have three kids. Three are they're all in school. Um, so your youngest is five. How old is your oldest? He's ten. Okay, so five ish. Fifth grade. Yeah. Yeah. What does your like schedule look like now having kids in school full time and are you, you're still doing photography on top of your planner business? Um, Yeah. Yeah. That's the one that pays photography pays the bills uh, right now (laughs) while I'm building the building the planner. It's working on it, but right now the photography pays the bills. So my, what does my schedule look like now that the kids are in school? Let me just kind of like run through my day real quick. We, we, I get up, I'm trying, I'm not a morning person, but I'm trying to be more of a morning person. Just kind of like, so that way I'm not waking up and having to go straight into like mom mode and people pestering my brain. So I do not like waking up early. I'll tell you that. So I'm like inching my alarm clock up forward every, every week. I add a couple more minutes to it. So I'm trying to have a little bit more peace in the morning. Um, I wake up, I get the kids breakfast ready. I wake them up. They can get themselves mostly ready for school now. Um, a lot of reminding, even though we do the same things every single day, they have ADHD too. So, uh, or some of them do, they have it different than me too, which is, complicated because I'm like I don't know how to yeah you're like I know my I don't know that you're (laughs) me and my oldest we have the same the same functioning kind of brain and so I get him but my middle one I'm like I don't know I don't you're we're gonna have to figure something out for you anyway so we get them and then get them out the door we like to walk to school um so I get them out the door and when I come home ideally on a perfect day I would come home I would clean up the kitchen for breakfast and I would do one room of chores I'm working on doing um, a room a day. Um, so that way I can kind of go into a little bit of deep cleaning and, you know, actually get the baseboards done, but it's not oh, like when I look at the whole house, I'm like, I have to clean all the baseboards in this whole house. That feels overwhelming. 
but one room feels okay I can clean the baseboards just in the living room and this window sills and vacuum and everything that doesn't feel so bad um and I can get it done in 20 like, minutes I've lived in my house for seven years I'm not sure I've ever done that <laughs> well see we moved into a brand new house that's what's really cool is that when we were moving out I saw all this nastiness in our house like we had lived there for 10 12 years and I'm like oh my gosh our doors are dirty from all the little fingers and then the window or not the window, the uh, light switches are dirty. And so when we moved to our new house, I saw how clean everything was. And I was like, I'm going to keep it this clean. So I literally clean my walls now, which is crazy. I've never cleaned my walls before. Okay. So I know you're looking around at your walls like, oh, I should, you know. So, <laughs> and we also have white walls, which is kind of a bummer because it gets really dirty. So I have to clean them up if you see all the smudges. Um, anyways, so I try to do a little bit of chores and then I will – either depending on my mood go work out or start working um so i'll do one of those two uh sometimes i'll take a walk so it kind of like ebbs and flows based on my mood i like i'm not much of an afternoon worker out or i like to do it in the morning so if i don't do it in the morning it's probably not going to happen so and then i spend like two hours working at max um i don't have a lot of threshold for work other than two hours i'm bored i'm done i can't do anymore and then i will take a nap usually after i have lunch <laughs> I love naps. I take a nap every day. Um, it's how I like decompress and like. Do just... you have you ever heard of human design? Maybe. Okay, this came up with another person too, but I we <laughs> now I'm like really curious. <laughs> I want to know your human design. So after this call, we will talk about this because Ooh, okay, um, human design is it's like an Eastern, not eastern medicine but like eastern theory energy blah 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 you're born with a certain energy and that's how you should be operating mm -hmm. and um i'm a projector i end up finding a lot of friends that are projectors it's only like 18 percent of the population but one of the things is is you're like zone of genius you can work really really quick and really really efficient but then you need to rest yeah and i'm like this is like the definition of being a projector <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Cause I do like, if I do a podcast call or I do a coaching call, I'm so drained or like, you know, I do two hours of work and I'm done. Yeah. And then I'm like, Ooh, I'm tired. <laughs> so you're probably right. I'd also do, have you done live? Oh gosh. Living your strengths. Is it kind of similar to that? No, I, I don't, I haven't heard of that one. So I don't that's know. a good one too. Living your strengths. So you know, like what your strengths are. Like I know I'm an information gatherer. Um, there's a, there's like, you get like five strengths or something like that and you, you work within your strengths and know what you're good at and it helps you be a better leader blah 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 blah, blah. so, so uh, you I have, do, yeah you don't work on your business full-time then but obviously no. which it's, is your that's the dream right to, right to, yeah to be on your own and and have something that helps your family but isn't full-time and it's also been like a, a a long time in the making you know i have you know i have systems and automations in the background and that allows me to be able to like take a step back and not have to do so much and just you know knowing when i work best and not trying to force it whenever i can't work and because if i if i sit down and i try to do something if i were to try to work at one o'clock in the afternoon it would take me three times longer to yeah. do anything so i just know that about myself i've learned that i've noticed it and i've i plan my day around it and um, even when my kids were little and they would have nap time i still couldn't I've been that I've never been a nap time worker because their nap time is my rest time too. So um it's just I mean it is what it is. I do get another burst of energy in the evenings, like after they go to bed. Um so once the kids get home from school and I'm doing my nap, we usually will I'll maybe do some more chores or hang out with them. You know, it just kind of depends on what where their mood is. Sometimes they yeah. leave the house and I don't even see them and I'm like, okay, I guess I'll do some chores or something. Sometimes I'm also feeling work. And so if I have more to do, I'll do it then too. So that's kind of like my white space after the kids get home from school. It just depends on where my mood is, where their mood is and what needs to be done. And then we go, we have hockey practice or gymnastics or boy scouts. We have something every single evening and we do that. And then we, we eat dinner as a family either before or after. And then I clean the kitchen, they go to bed. I do my self-care evening routine to take care of myself and help me sleep really good. Um, well, better because that's another thing that ADHD thing is sometimes we have a really hard time going to sleep. So I have to have like a very ritual pre bedtime in order to make myself like sleep at all. Like last night I didn't do very much. And um, I woke up like 75 times because I just, it's, I just don't sleep very well. So that's the other thing I have like a specific music I turn on 
and uh, I read um, is my way of like turning off my brain from work. Um, but then sometimes I get too into a book and then I don't sleep because I'm like reading the book. Yes. Too. Yeah. But, but in general, <laughs> I'm the same way. Like I have to, it's. Yeah. I have to, I, I love to take baths and I read in the bath. I, I read a lot of books. What are you reading right now? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> what? Potty stuff? No, smutty stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I really like the author Sarah Kate. Oh, I've heard of her. Yeah. Yeah. And she's a little bit more on the darker side, but not like dark, like super dark. Yeah. Well, I finally gave in and started reading the Throne of Glass series. Um, I have because, not read that because, but everyone talks about it. So I'm, but I'm not a fan. I was, I didn't want to be, you know, I was like, oh, I'm just doing do it because it's a trend. And then my friend's like, this is like one of the best series I've ever read. And I was like, all right, I'll read it because I had nothing else to read. We're in a small town now. So the library isn't quite as robust as I was used to. And so I was having a hard time getting books. And so I was like, fine, I'll borrow these books for you and read them. I'm like, yeah, they're pretty good. I don't know if they're the best I've ever read, but they're definitely... I can't believe I'm reading like a fantasy series because this is not okay. That not was my right. question because like I've I've strayed away from it because I don't do fantasy. So yeah, that's I like it. I like detective and like true crime and you know like stuff like that, um, like mystery murders and stuff like that. And so I was like, okay, I guess I'll try it. But I really do like it. So as we're talking, me, yeah. I need to find, well, as we're talking, I'll find the other series to recommend. And for all the listeners, okay. like if you are big readers and somewhat like romance books then obviously read these yourselves too but um there was a series that I read there's an author that I love that has that tilt to it right there's another story on top of it and that's the st stuff I like too it's not just about the fluffy romance there's something yeah. else going on but I've read 75 books this year so that's it might take me a just, bit that's absolutely that. insane that's amazing I do you forget what you read after you read it yes Okay. I, I couldn't tell you what books I read. I Because I read at least probably about a book a week. Um, but I, I don't know. People are like, have you read? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> tell me what I, it was well, about. I maybe read like names, but I couldn't tell you like the story. Right? Mm -hmm. So I can, I can, if they ask me like, oh, have you read this book? Normally I'll know like, yes, I've read the book. But other than that, like it's. It's out of my mind. Done. <laughs> I moved on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. So. You know, I think we've already kind of touched on how you're balancing kind of motherhood and the business and, and what it looks like for you. I'm just curious, and maybe you don't have anything, but how, with an ADHD tilt to things, right? How is that different than maybe a non-neurospicy person, right? How is that? Because I, again, like I haven't been formally diagnosed, but I very much feel not normal compared to my my best friend who's my sister-in-law <laughs> and how our brains work um so yeah what a, what other like how would you say things differ besides the list that's, that's a really good and complicated question so I'm going to take you back way 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 back to when I was diagnosed in middle in middle school so I got lucky and I got diagnosed when I was young because especially females are typically diagnosed a lot later because we one we our symptoms, I don't know what, whatever, or like our traits come out differently than what boys do. Like they tend to be a little bit more hyperactive and girls are a little bit more on the like kind of inattentive, but that's not even a good word either. Inattentive is not a good word because we're very attentive when we want to be. But so I got lucky that I got diagnosed with it. Um, and it's because my parents are not ADHD or my stepmom and my dad were not ADHD. And they're like, what is the matter with you? And they're like, this is insane. Like you are like, I would do homework. They would make me do homework and I would take it to school and I would get zeros. And I'm like, I know you did this homework. Why, why are you getting a zero? I was like, I just forgot to turn it in. Like literally would have homework in my bag and it wouldn't turn it in. So it would frustrate them to no end that I'm not necessarily a dumb child. Right. But I was a straight C student. Like I just made C's and my husband's like, wow, your report card in fourth grade is awful. Like he was, he found my report card from when I was in fourth grade. He's like, Oh my gosh. And I was like, yeah, and I told you I was a straight C student, but obviously I'm running a business now. I'm running multiple businesses now. I am fairly successful. I have a, you know, like I'm not a dumb girl, right? I'm I I'm relatively intelligent in certain areas. Um, and so but growing up, I thought that I was not smart because I was not book smart. I had a hard time with tests. Um, I didn't 
want to do things that I didn't want to do. And so growing up, I was able to, you know, start pulling things about this ADHD diagnosis and see what, you know, other people said about having it and realize that it's not that, you know, I'm not smart. It's just that I am only interested in what I want to be interested in. And so that's why a lot of times people who are ADHD, we tend to gravitate towards owning our own business because you would not catch me, catch me dead sitting in an office from nine to five. Absolutely not. Um, even when I did have a full-time job, it was a, it was not a nine to five job. It was sometimes nine to five, sometimes 12 to 10. It was not sitting at a desk. Most of the time I was a lifeguard supervisor. So I would train lifeguards and I would get into the pool and clean and, you know, all kinds of things that was just death, not death stuff. But I was really good at organizing 200 employees at the same time, which is very strange because you'd be like, oh, you're ADHD, you can't organize. I can't organize if I don't want to organize, but if I can, I want to. And so that's what's been kind of unique about running a business is one, I can run it the way I want to run it. I'm organized if I want to be organized and I have learned to find ways to make me organized and the things that I'm not very good at, especially outsourcing. I, money, Heck no. I, I, I don't know what's going on. I'm the worst money manager. I know like my husband, it drives my husband nuts how bad I am at managing money. And so I hired a financial person who she does my books every month and she hands me a piece of paper at the end of the year and says, this is how you're going to file your taxes. And this is how you're going to budget yourself. And you know, so, cause that's just not my strength and I don't want it to be my strength and there, you can't make me. <laughs> Did I answer your question? I went like on a really long tangent there. Well, I think the the fact that it's like you're learning about yourself and what works for you. And obviously that'll work both ways, right? Whether you're ADHD or not. Um, and I think for me, I have always been super about lists and I've never had a memory and, and these things that I was a very good student. So I almost, for me, it's hard because I feel like I am two different people. Like there was the school me and then there's the me now. And like, I was a straight A student. I was third in my class. Like I was very good at school, not good at tests. Obviously I still scored well, but I struggled with tests. Like I really had to try, but the, I was put on like the slow track in school originally because they thought that I couldn't handle right. The harder stuff. And it was, I was just bored and I didn't want to engage in school. So like there's some of it that, yeah. aligns, but I was a straight A student. So like I, like I said, with my, my, um, my son, we're very similar. And so I'm seeing that in him and he gets really distracted in class and, you know, but his teacher, thank goodness has noticed that he is really good at math. And so she's giving him advanced work. And I, I said, did you, do you guys have GT there gifted and talented or something like that? Like, like, okay. Probably, so but I, I, again, I have a kindergartner, so I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, they, we had it when I was in school, but when I was in school, GT was, it was more of like advanced learners. And when I was in school, it was more of advanced learners and like overachievers. But now, now they've kind of changed it to be more of like creative learners and those kids that are not doing well because they're bored with what they're learning. Mm -hmm. And that's he, if the, his teachers notice that if he is bored in math, he's going to get distracted and he's going to get behind and he's not going to do his work. And so she has to keep him engaged. And that's probably a that's lot of what my problem was. It wasn't that I was not good at school is that I was not engaged. I wasn't doing things that I want to do. And, um, I, so I just, I shut off. I don't, I don't care about what you're talking to me about. Am I really good at learning when it's something I want to learn about? Absolutely. I'm an information gatherer. That's one of my strengths oh, yeah, is that too. I, I can become, an expert in something really fast if I want to, but if it's something I, I don't want to do. <laughs> yes. See, I, you, I need to read what you're talking about and you need to read it. Yes. <laughs> well, it it's probably very similar. I love, I have a whole shelf of like self-help and like leadership books. I love, I love that kind of stuff. So, so I used to be more into it. Um, and I feel like I got too critical of myself. Uh, of That's what I was going to say. Um, so there's another thing with ADHD and I can't remember the exact term of it right now, but you can kind of go one of two ways. One, you can feel like everyone hates you and that you're not good enough and everyone's just like mad at you, or you get really down on yourself about 
failing. And I wish I could remember the term for this right now because I just realized it was a term. I didn't know that other people felt like this. I think the entire world hates me. Like, I know it's so bizarre, but I'm like, no one likes me. Um, mm-hmm. I know that's not true. Like, meant, like intellectually, I know that that's not true, but that's something that I just kind of like project <laughs> onto the world. But then there's two ways of it. It's like, if you can't do something and do it perfectly, then you don't want to do it at all. Or you don't want to do it because you just think everyone doesn't like you kind of thing. I'm going to find out in the word and tell you later. I just cannot for the life of me remember what it is right now. Well, oh gosh. And now I'm like, so I see so much of this in my daughter already too. Uh, so we had parent teacher conferences. I know we're supposed to be talking about planning, but whatever. Um, <laughs> like, yes. I, we had parent teacher conferences this week and the the biggest feedback that I got from the teacher, and this is something that I was not surprised by because I had already seen it before she was going to kindergarten, is that my daughter is a, she's a perfectionist and she will not try if she thinks she's going to fail. And I'm one of those things. Yeah. And, and she just is like very much does not like making mistakes, will not try things and is and apple doesn't fall far from the tree um so like i see where she gets it from but at the same time it's not like i've modeled that for her right like she's been like this since two like it's not mm-hmm. something that is new she's been like this since day one and we'll not try things if it's new and if she doesn't absolutely know she's going to be perfect at it right away and i didn't i don't know i now i'm like well I, maybe I need to like learn more just in case I, you know, if I am ADHD, well, there's a chance that she's ADHD and, and keeping an eye out for that in females, because it, like you said, it's very different than having boy traits normally. Yeah. So. And I figured out the term it's rejection sensitive dysphoria, RSD. Oh, I think Look I've seen that on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. It, I, when I saw that, that was a, a I was like, Oh my gosh, it's a thing that other people experience. And it was like eye opening. Like it was crazy. I, I've always struggled with that. And I've talked a little bit about it with my friends, but that's something that I struggled with in high school a lot. Mm-hmm. And I had serious depression issues because of it. Um, because it's just, so, I mean, it still comes up. I have people muted on my social media right now that I would generally consider friends, but I've had to mute them because of that like feeling of, feeling left out or FOMO or like mm-hmm. that I'm not good enough to be their friend's clothes. And I, I I've recognized it now in my thirties, but at the same time, then I have to mute people because I don't want, want to feel that. like that. Yeah. It's, and, and it's, I love talking about these things because only up until recently did I realize that other people very frequently feel the yeah. same way. And I also, you know, recently a couple of years ago had really bad anxiety and depression um, it was in my own family. I was like, oh, no one, no one likes me. I can't, and I didn't want to be around family events and stuff like that. And so I was like, wait a minute, this is not a normal, of course my family loves me. And like, it's just, I don't know why I have this feeling. And so I, I also, I take um, another thing that goes along with ADHD is a lot of times you tend to have anxiety and depression too. Um, there's so many things that there's, it's very intricate and it's not like a, you just have bad habits and you can't pay attention. It's, it's the way your brain functions. Yeah, and, and it doesn't mean you can't you can't be I, successful. You can be very successful. It's just work with your brain. I've had Industry. um, I did a podcast episode on this, but I um, I have had severe anxiety since having my daughter, mm-hmm. and I'm on meds, and I was having regular panic attacks prior to being on meds, and now I so we, what we didn't mention in the intro is you're in Texas, I'm in Minnesota, yes. um, and so there are certain things that are legal in Minnesota now too that have helped. Oh yeah don't know if they're legal in Texas. They're not. They are. Oh, no. No, no, no. Um, you, but there is no levels of, of THC that are legal federally, which I also didn't know. And that actually is the only amount that I need. So, but yeah, there's definitely tools that have helped with my anxiety, mm-hmm. but it is something that took a skyrocket when I had my daughter. Yes. Um, and prior to that, it was mostly the depression side of things. But yeah, the Anxiety when having kids, I think there's just all moms feel it in some way. And mm-hmm. definitely something that's not we have enough about. Got to talk about it more. Like all these things that we feel like that we feel shameful about feeling and thinking about, I think that they have to be talked about because you don't want other people, you know, experiencing that and feeling alone because you're not, you're really not alone. Like, you know, you every everyone feels these things just, you know, they kind of manifest a little bit differently, but they're there. So you're not alone if you're out there and you're like, oh, 
I'm not the only one who feels rejection dysphoria or, you know, sensitivity dysphoria or whatever it's called, RSD. You know, talk about these things, people. Come on, let us know that we're not alone. So as expected, we've completely deviated from what I planned. But one of the, obviously this is the, no, this is why I don't even plan podcasts most of the time. But um, one of the things that, obviously this is the Being Better Everyday podcast, your planner, your approach to things is very much in alignment with that concept. So for you, what does being better every day look like for you right now? Right now, it it changes from season to season, right? It's not always going to be the same thing for me. So this, this season right now, I'm, I'm working on taking care of myself because we, we moved over the summer and I, you know, wanted to help my kids adjust to a new house and a new neighborhood, a new town, a new school. And I completely forgot about taking care of myself. So right now being better every day looks like taking care of myself. So that way I'm not trying to pour from an empty cup for them. And I, I know that I can be a better parent and a better mom um, and a better wife when I am taking care of myself. And so reminding myself and planning in my planner, I yeah, literally plan self care days. Yep. Uh, because otherwise I won't do it. Um, and just, you know, and along with you know, we've talked a lot about ADHD. It, we tend to have highs and lows in, in days and in weeks. And, you know, it, it, some days like yesterday was a really low day and today is a really high day for me. But also kind of planning because I know that I'm probably going to have a high day or a low day and trying to kind of like rather than, you know, go completely manic and clean the entire house on one day and then sleep all day the next day, I try to kind of like let the pressure out of the tank a little bit. So, um, taking care of myself, taking care of our house and just doing a little bit at a time every single day is kind of what being better to me, it looks like every day. So I can kind of stay on like a, I'm not living on a roller coaster. I'm more of like on a, a nice flat road. <laughs> it's less exciting, but works better. I feel like if I were to answer that right now, it's going to be that, but with my house, like you were talking about with the daily, the zones and stuff. I had a habit of a tidy 15, like cleaning something for 15 minutes a day. Last year, I was very consistent on it. This year, I've completely dropped it. And so now I do that on Friday afternoons, I end up going like manic cleaning and like cleaning for hours because I neglect the house the entire week. So I think for me, it's getting back in the habit of, I like the idea of just a room, less overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Because that's the thing that without, I've been the only, I've had this conversation with my husband, but I've been the only one cleaning the house for about eight months. And it gets overwhelming when it's all on you. So truly. So yeah. So where can people find you? Where can people find the planner? Because this will be airing at the beginning of December. Uh, so there's still time to get your 2025 planner if you do not have one. I will say it's it's ve- definitely at least the version I got, the Newport planner, it's a it's a desk planner. Like it's it's a, mm-hmm. it's big. They're big. Yeah. Um, but it def- then gives you room to to write, especially if you don't have tiny handwriting. So yeah. Yeah. It's definitely not a pocket planner. You, you sit down with it at your kitchen counter or at your desk and you yeah. use it. And you know, that's what, that's what I like. And that's what I want. And uh, we can go into all kinds of like how I plan and why I use it and how, it, why I created it the way I created it. But you can find all that information um, on the couch or no, no, I've changed my <laughs> podcast <laughs> title. It's called the organized creative um, is my podcast, my planner. You can find it at capture the chaos.com. And I also hang out on Instagram, even though I don't always post like I'm supposed to. Um, I hang out on Instagram. I am Brittany Renee underscore co. I think so. I'm sure you're going to link oh, it. Somewhere. Um, yeah, I'll put it <laughs> yeah. in the show notes. Because so. my name is spelled uniquely. So um, you'll never get it right if you just try to guess how to spell my name. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I again, for those listening, I was a guest on Brittany's podcast as well. Um, and yours is airing around the same time. So it's perfect. Yes, that's fun. And again, I, I, I may not use, for me, I'm like, I, I can't ever stick to a planner for the full year. It's mm-hmm. a problem. I need a variety. <laughs> but, different things for different reasons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but again, I'm very excited to use not only the weekly list, because that's just how I, like your layout is how I currently operate, uh, but the, the content planning as well. So if you are looking for a planner, if you are, and it, it certainly doesn't have to be only if you're a creative business owner, right? Like you're, you have some tips in there for photographers, but in general, it's for great for any someone who has something outside of being a mom or. or I mean, um, even if you're a mom who, you know, you're the room mom, you do, you know, volunteer for the yeah. kids. I have yeah. a lot of people who 
are, who have started using it and they're just, I don't want to say just a mom, but like they don't have a yeah. business, you know what I mean? They're like, oh, I don't have a business. Am I, is this going to be useful for me? And they, they've confidently told me that it is useful for them. So. <laughs> well, and the nice thing with the layout too is, is it is segregated a little bit, right? So it isn't like, okay, if I don't have a business, I can't use this planner because it is segregated to a point where you absolutely can just use it for personal use and, and have that. And obviously we, uh, follow the same person so um from a planner business perspective and so the quality is there too and that's the oh, other yeah. thing you know the thick paper it's nice from a beautiful i, I mean i buy i'm biased but it is a pretty looking planner <laughs> <laughs> and i got the green one there is a cute flower one but i was i it wasn't the right colors for me so i i got yeah. the the plain green one and i think there's other is there other versions than oh yeah you want you want to see them real quick here i have them right here yeah. Um, this is the one I'm using this year. It is a uh, brown book bound. It's like a leather, vegan leather book bound one because I wanted vertical layout this year. Um, I, I like the notes layout. I think it's really beneficial. But I wanted, since my kids are in school and so my time blocking looks a little differently, um, I wanted it to be a little bit more vertical like this. And so while it's not necessarily a time blocking planner, I can kind of do some blocks in it. And so I wanted it vertical, but it won't fit in the, the coil bound because of how close it goes to the, anyways, uh, you don't need all the ins and outs, but I had to make it a book bound. It lays flat, which I love. And again, it super important. Flat. Yeah. yeah. Cause you don't want to have like a little like, a ridge in it. And then I have another one with a different cover and then I have that floral one, which I, I don't have it on hand. And then also I did the sage one. So the yeah. coil bound. So nice nice variety and then you do do digital planning for those who want a digital planner as well so again you know where to find her so thank you again so much for your insights and experience and we will uh link everything in the show notes it was a pleasure talking to you and we obviously will talk offline about strengths yes and our books yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you again and that's a wrap on today's episode of the being better everyday podcast thank you for listening i truly appreciate each listener if you've enjoyed the conversation, I'd love if you would leave a rating and review or share it with your bestie to help me reach more women looking to ask the hard questions and live above that status quo. To see any visuals, head over to my YouTube channel. Links, socials, and resources mentioned can be found in today's show notes. If you're looking for more, you can find me on Instagram at julie.pwdesigns, sharing the behind the scenes of my everyday life as a millennial mom, corporate girly, and small business owner. Until next time, keep on taking one step at a time towards your version of being better every day.